Good day, dear students. This is a video on the mechanism of action of tetanus toxin. You say an injury occurs, injury to a person due to a rusted iron nail. Injury to a person due to rusted iron nail or due to rusted object, then the tetanus bacilli which are present in the soil, the Clostridium titani releases the tetanus toxin. And this tetanus toxin affects the spinal cord. So there is release of tetanus toxin. From the tetanus bacilli or the Clostridium titani which is present in the soil and this causes damage to the spinal cord it affects the spinal cord what it can do is it can cause intense spasm of the muscles and even of the respiratory muscles leading to death so now there is a spinal cord a section of the spinal cord with the central gray matter and the peripheral white matter the central canal then close to the spinal cord is a muscle belly the belly of a muscle this could be any muscle like biceps triceps quadriceps femoris gastrocnemius soleus any muscle emerging from the Anterior horn cell. Anterior horn cell because it lies in the anterior horn of the spinal cord is the alpha motor neuron. So emerging from the anterior horn cell. Anterior horn cell. Is the alpha motor neuron which innervates the skeletal muscle and causes them to contract. innervates the skeletal muscle and causes them to contract. So it causes contraction of the skeletal muscles. The alpha motor neuron is influenced by various higher influences like cerebral cortex, basal ganglia, cerebellum, vestibular apparatus, brain stem. But apart from this, this alpha motor neuron is like a horse galloping away. It is like a horse galloping away. So this horse now has to be reined in. It has to be checked. And this is done by a neuron emerging from an alpha motor neuron. This is known as a recurrent collateral. Recurrent means it turns back on itself. Collateral. Recurrent collateral. Turning back on itself, collateral. This recurrent collateral synapses on a third neuron, an interneuron. On an interneuron. This interneuron is the hero of the story. It is known as the Renshaw cell. It is known as the Renshaw cell. This interneuron reigns in the horse. It prevents uncontrolled firing of the alpha motor neurons. That is why it prevents uncontrolled contraction of the skeletal muscles and maintains an optimum level of contraction of the skeletal muscles. So there is an alpha motor neuron which causes contraction of the skeletal muscle. There is a recurrent collateral with synapses on the Renshaw cell. The Renshaw cell reigns in, gives the alpha motor neuron in check. It does this by releasing an inhibitory neurotransmitter, glycine. 
Glycine is the most common inhibitory neurotransmitter in the spinal cord and GABA is the most common inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. Glycine, just like raining in the horse, keeps the alpha motor neuron in check. It keeps the alpha motor neuron in check. As a result, contraction of the skeletal muscle is optimum and optimum tone is maintained. So by release of an inhibitory neurotransmitter glycine, the Renshaw cell keeps the alpha motor neuron in check so that optimum contraction of the skeletal muscle is there so, and the tone is optimum. Now if there is an injury, then there is a release of tetanus toxin and tetanus toxin, what does it do? You guessed it right, tetanus toxin inhibits the Renshaw cell. It binds to the Renshaw cell and inhibits it. And inhibits it. Does injury causes the release of tetanus toxin, which binds to and inhibits the ratio cell. As a result, no glycine is released. No glycine is released. So this is inhibition of inhibition. This is inhibition of inhibition. which is known as disinhibition or even excitation, which is known as disinhibition or even excitation. And this disinhibition or excitation can then cause uncontrolled firing of the alpha motor neuron. Now the alpha motor neuron is no longer held in check. There is uncontrolled firing of the alpha motor neuron. And as a result, the uncontrolled firing causes greatly increased tone, which is known as spasm of the muscles. Greatly increased tone, which is known as spasm of the muscles. And this spasm, particularly of the skeletal muscles, can lead to death. This spasm, particularly increased tone of the skeletal muscles, can lead to death. So there is an alpha motor neuron which causes contraction of the skeletal muscle. There is a recurrent collateral with synapses on the Renshaw cell and keeps the alpha motor neuron in check by releasing glycine. Injury causes release of tetanus toxin which inhibits the Renshaw cell preventing the release of glycine and inhibition of inhibition causes disinhibition and excitation and causes uncontrolled contraction of the skeletal muscle and spasm of the skeletal muscle that can even lead to uh, death. So this is the gist of uh, the video. I am Dr. Swapnil Parlekar. Thank you for watching my channel and have a good day.